Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time here, I'm Nurse Alyssa. And in today's video, we're going to be exploring the different types of wound drainage that you may encounter in wound care. Understanding the drainage of a wound is critical for proper treatment and healing. So we're gonna be discussing the different types of drainage, the meanings, and when you should be concerned. Wound drainage or exudate refers to the fluid that's released from a wound as part of the healing process. Drainage can be normal part of healing, but the type, color, and amount of drainage can help healthcare providers assess the wound's condition. Understanding these differences is key to monitoring and managing wounds effectively. So let's start with serous drainage. This type of drainage is thin, clear, and often appears slightly yellow. It's typically seen in the early stages of wound healing when the body is working to repair itself. Serous drainage is usually a sign that the wound is not infected and it often happens to be a part of normal inflammatory phase of healing. This drainage is common after surgery and injury and it may be present for the first one to three days as the body creates fluid to aid in tissue repair. It's important to note while serous drainage is normal and expected, it should decrease over time as the healing progresses. If the drainage becomes thick or changes color, it could signal a problem such as an infection. Serous drainage typically doesn't cause concern on its own, but if the amount increases or persists longer than usual, it may require attention from a healthcare professional. Next, we have sanguineous drainage. This type of drainage consists of fresh, bright red blood that occurs shortly after an injury or surgery. It's the body's initial response to wounds as it begins to clot and seal the injury. Fresh blood in this form is typically normal in the first few hours or days after the wound occurs, particularly in surgical wounds, cuts, or other traumatic injuries. Sanguineous drainage indicates that there is still some active bleeding and it's a normal part of the wound's early stages. The amount of sanguineous drainage should decrease over time as the blood starts to clot and the healing process begins. However, if bleeding continues for longer than expected or if the drainage becomes excessive, it could be a sign of complications like an unaddressed source of bleeding or issues with clotting or coagulation. In these places, it's important to apply direct pressure to the wound and seek medical attention if the bleeding does not stop. Normally, the bleeding will stop within 10 minutes of holding direct pressure. Now let's talk about serosanguineous drainage. This type of drainage is a combination of serous fluid, which is clear and yellow, and sanguineous fluid, which is red and contains blood cells. The result is a light pink or light red drainage often seen during the early stages of wound healing. Serosanguineous drainage is common during the first few days following an injury or surgery. It typically indicates that the body is still in that inflammatory phase of healing and is working to repair the wound. This drainage is considered normal and can often be seen in surgical wounds or after injuries that have started to heal. While it is a sign that healing is progressing, it is important to monitor the drainage if the serosanguineous drainage becomes thick, darker, or starts to resemble purulent drainage. This could be a sign of infection and further care may be needed. In most cases, serosanguineous drainage is not a cause for concern and the amount should decrease over time as the wound healing and the body transitions into the proliferatory phase of healing where tissue regeneration takes place. If you notice that the drainage continues for an extended period of time or becomes more pronounced or changes in colors, it's always good to reach out to your healthcare provider to ensure the wound is healing properly. In some cases, excessive or persistent serosanguineous drainage may suggest that the wound isn't healing as expected or may need additional medical attention. Finally, let's talk about purulent drainage. So this is thick drainage that typically ranges in color from yellow to green to even brown, depending on the severity and type of infection present. Purulent drainage is a clear indicator that the wound is infected and contains dead white blood cells, bacteria, and tissue debris. 
The color of the drainage can give clues about the type of infection. For example, greenish drainage often points to pseudomonas, a common bacterial infection. Yellow drainage might indicate a less severe, severe infection, while brown drainage suggests the presence of old dead tissue. In addition to thick drainage, infected wounds with purulent drainage will likely show other signs of infection, such as redness, warmth around the wound, swelling, pain, or tenderness, a strong, unpleasant odor coming from the wound. If you notice purulent drainage, it's essential to take immediate action. This drainage typically requires cleaning, proper wound care, and may need antibiotic treatment. If the infection worsens or you experience systematic symptoms like fever, seek medical attention as soon as possible as this is critical. So to recap, here's a quick summary of the four main types of wound drainage that we've discussed today. So serious drainage is that clear and yellow indicating normal, healthy healing without infection. Sanguinous drainage is that fresh, bright red blood, which is common in the first stages of wound healing, but it should taper off as the wound does heal. Zero sanguinous drainage is the mix of serious and sanguinous drainage. So it's that light pink to light red drainage. This is normal within the first few days of healing and does indicate normal healing process. And then lastly, purulent drainage, which is that thick and typically yellow, green, brown, and it signals infection that requires immediate attention. I hope this video did give you a better understanding of the different types of drainage or exudate that does come from a wound. But that's all I have for this video, guys, and I hope to catch you in my next one. Bye for now. Don't forget to visit my website, thewoundconsultant.com, for all your wound care needs. Whether you're seeking professional wound care consultations, digital resources, informative books, or high quality wound care supplies, we have everything to support you. Whether you're dealing with a wound or you're a healthcare professional, there's something for everyone. Visit today and take the next step in effective wound care.